All right, everyone, it's time for a new save. And where exactly are we headed to? Scotland! We're headed to Hearts, to be more precise. Let me take you on a journey. Actually, let me take you on a number of journeys. Part of Midlothian FC, commonly known as Hearts, are a professional football club competing in the Scottish Premiership. Formed in 1874, they are the oldest and most successful football club in the Scottish capital. As of August 2021, they are the largest fan-owned club in the UK. They've won the Scottish League Championship four times in total, but the last time they did it was 1959 for 60. Outside of that long drought, it doesn't help that the entirety of Scottish football has been dominated by two clubs, Celtic and Rangers. After last season, the club is in a good place to where maybe, with some time and effort, Maybe we can finally unseat the old firm and be the first Scottish team to win a premiership since Aberdeen did it almost 40 years ago. I see your old buttons for punishment. Our roster going into the 2022-23 season is led by 39-year-old goalkeeper Craig Gordon, who started his career here at Hearts before Sunderland nearly ruined everything during his prime. He's basically Scotland's best keeper in the modern age, and we're pretty lucky to have him. But one of the other intriguing things that drew me to hearts is that they seem to have embraced a bit of an Australian connection in recent years by bringing in players like Kai Rouse, Nathaniel Atkinson, and Cameron Devlin. We're about to reach a breakthrough with the Aussies. We do bolster the team a little bit more by bringing in Wrexham's Jordan Davies to help with depth in the midfield. We eventually convinced Arsenal to let us take Ryan Porteous on loan. And then we also shipped Gary McKay-Steven back to the MLS before getting our expectations to start the year. Our start to the season against Ross County is not exactly the best as we draw a nil-nil, but no time to dwell on missed chances as our second game of the season is against Hibernian, or Hibs for short. They are a part of the Edinburgh Derby, which is a fierce rivalry between Hearts and Hibs that dates back to the clubs being founded in the mid-1870s. Granted, it has been a bit more one-sided in recent years, as Hibs' last win against Hearts in this derby goes as far back as 2019. You add to the fact that we got Ryan Porteous, who is a former Hibs player, and stuff might just get a little more personal. But. We do take care of business, we beat Hebs 2-0, Porteous finally understands what it's like to be on the winning end of this derby, and it's a good first win for the start of the year. We then add on to the momentum by managing to defeat St. Mirren in the Scottish League Cup, then we somehow managed to get a draw against Celtic thanks to a Liam Bryce goal late in the second half, all in between our Europa League playoff qualifiers. Speaking of which, we ended up getting AEK Larnakas from Cyprus in those qualifiers. The first leg didn't go so well, but look, it's fine. We took care of business in the second leg at home, and would you look at that? We are qualified for the group stages of the Europa League outright. Pretty neat. After a St. Johnston win and a Dundee United draw to end August, we head into September, and with it, we get our Europa League group, and it's doable. A bit unexpected, but I'll take some luck in the draw for once. From there, we do some loan business for Rangers' to Scott Wright and Dortmund's Jamie Bino Giddens before the transfer window closes. September sees us go on a pretty nifty run, winning Premiership and Europa League games alike, outside of one black mark that we take against Dinamo Zagreb in their stadium. But our most important win of the month does come in in an extra time affair in the Scottish League Cup against defending champion Celtic. And it is none other than Liam Boyce who comes to our rescue, scoring a brace in the dying minutes of the game and then scoring in extra time to punch our ticket into the semi-finals of the League Cup. But then October came along and it presented some challenges. Seriously lads, I get losing to Rangers but losing to Kilmarnock in Ross County? Go <laughs> no day that. Oh, just go no. With the World Cup to be played, the schedule for November was short, and thankfully, the team got it together and produced some results, including going to the top of the table in the Europa after a win against Austrian, rescuing a draw against Motherwell, not letting Rangers beat us for once, and a four-goal night for Lauren Shankland against Livingstone. 
We also qualified for the round of 16 in the Europa League, so we've got that going for us. Four to six weeks later. We come back from the World Cup break, back in form, winning four straight in December, and Liam Boyce is a big reason for that, walking into January with 22 goals across all competitions. This is good considering that we do need to make a push for third place in the Premiership in order to guarantee Europa League football next year at minimum. We went into the third Edinburgh Derby of the year where Liam Boyce's brace helped us secure a 4-1 win. Which is comforting given that we found out hours earlier that we were getting Celtic in the fourth round of the Scottish Cup. Which, by the way, is the second oldest competition in association football history. It's at this time that we realize that we need reinforcements. Much like the real-life version of Hearts has done, we proceed to bring in Newcastle's uh, Garen Poole on loan, then make a deal to get Callum Patterson out of Sheffield Wednesday and Yutaro Oda from Vissel Kobe on board. In the League Cup, we take care of business against Cove Rangers to punch our ticket to the finals with a 3-1 win. And we know soon after that it will be Motherwell that will be facing in the final. Impressive. Very nice. A win against Aberdeen in the Premiership follows suit, and then our big Scottish Cup match against Celtic, who have won this competition 40 times total. The game itself is a cagey affair, until Craig Hackett picks up a loose deflection in the box after a throw-in and sends it into the net at the 113th minute mark to give us the victory, knocking out one half of the old firm from the competition and giving us a legitimate shot at heading back to the finals once again. Not long after that, we secured the loan rights to Norwegian midfielder Odin Thiago Holm, and right on time as the Scottish League Cup final is on deck against Motherwell. It's a wolf out battle, but it's the Loney himself who just arrived the day prior to the fixture, who strikes through from outside of the box and gets one onto the net as Odin gets us the 1-0 lead, and it is more than enough to give Hearts its first trophy in a decade. While we do follow that epic win by laying a goose egg against Livingstone in the Premiership, we set our focus into finalizing our transfer window as Robert Snodgrass and Benny Bonengby uh, leave on transfers and Nathaniel Atkinson goes out on loan for the rest of the season. But this does give us enough in the books to make a move for Uruguayan midfielder Fabrizio Diaz for 1.5 mil along with grabbing Bruce Anderson for depth at the striker position. We kick off February with another draw against Rangers, then a win against Dundee United. But the day before our fifth round match in the Scottish Cup against Gala FR, it doesn't help the fact that he's had a similar injury to this on another knee during his time in England with Burton Albion. But for now, he will be in rehab and hopefully we can see him make a comeback sometime next year. We've got to keep it moving, so we go for February as a win against Gala FR and the Scottish Cup pushes us further into the rounds where we'll get Falkirk in the quarterfinals. The wins do continue to come for the remainder of the month against Motherwell and we managed to catch Celtic off guard by going with a 4-3-3 Gegen press formation and end up winning 3-1 against them. But perhaps we should have saved these surprise formations for the Europa League Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be sh The Europa League merchants themselves. Damn it, man, was Real Betis or Leverkusen unavailable? Even a win against St. Johnston isn't enough to carry any momentum going into that first leg, where Sevilla proceeds to treat us in the same way that a very sweet dog treats a new toy. We go back home, we lick our wounds, takes some frustrations out on Falkirk in the Scottish Cup to move on to the semis, but then we've got to face the music. A second leg at home, being down two goals against the most successful team in this entire competition. It's a recipe for disaster. That gets completely turned on its head when Karin Rekic makes the dumbest sliding tackle known to man on Cool outside of the box and gets a straight red card for it. We've got a lifeline here and that's all the motivation the boys need as Garan Kuo gets his hat-trick 
by the early part of the second half. Barry McKay and Bruce Anderson add to his scoring and we walk away with a 5-0 win in a 6-3 aggregate win over Sevilla. My dog! Even with Lazio announced as our quarterfinal opponents, uh, that challenge is just all that much more inviting now that we know that we can hang. Although it would be nice to follow up big wins in trophy or continental competitions with another win as Aberdeen proceeds to burst our bubble by beating us 2-1 before the international break. We have a busy April ahead of us between the Europa League quarterfinals, the Scottish Cup semi-final and some premiership matches. We managed to win those premiership bouts including a third encounter against Hibs, but the first leg against Lazio at home. Zero Immobile does Zero Immobile things after a rare error from Porteous. They hold on, it's a 1-0 loss. But we are undeterred and we go into the Scottish Cup semi-final against Livingstone with that mentality. They make this one tougher than usual. We do go to extra time, but uh, Alan Forrest buries a penalty in order to punch our ticket into the Scottish Cup final. And would you look at that, it's a rematch of last year's final against Rangers too. But going back to the Europa League, we do go into the second leg. The effort is there, we fight it out to a 2-2 draw, but we just cannot get that third goal to tie the aggregate. So the unlikeliest of runs is finally over for us, but I do believe it's a run that's going to make us stronger in the long term. For now, we need to focus on the final games of the Premiership and the Scottish Cup Final. After 33 games, the Scottish Premiership splits into two groups, the Championship Group and the Relegation Group. As a part of the Championship Group, we are fighting to maintain our spot in third place and get Europa League football, not to mention trying to give Celtic and Rangers a bit of a scare for the top two spots. So of course, that's when Celtic finally decides to give one over on us this year. But not to worry, we do seal a pair of wins against Aberdeen and Ross County to secure our third place spot for good, and with it, we arrive at the final of the Scottish Cup. Last season, Rangers beat us 2-0 to win the Cup. We're hoping our fate is a little bit different this roundabout. However, a few days prior to the game, we do get some news. Liam Boyce has announced his retirement just a few days before the final. No, 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 what no! Deal? No, 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 yeah. no! Hell no! Hell no! So, the mission for us now is pretty simple. We're winning it for Liam, lads. And we're catching Rangers by surprise in the process with a brand new 4-3-1-2 formation. As the final begins, the new formation immediately begins to pay dividends as we draw a penalty in the very first minute of the match. It is saved by the Rangers keeper, but we keep it moving, as the opportunities do continue to come, and in the 22nd minute, and it's, it is none other than one of our January signings in Fabrizio Diaz who finds the back of the net after an incredible effort from Odin Thiago Holm and Toby Civic. Rangers almost end up getting an equalizer in the 65th minute, but Alice Cochran blocks the shot from going, going in at the goal line. From there, we keep Rangers at bay and with it, lads, we've done it. We've done it for Liam. Heart of Midlothian FC have won the Scottish Cup for the first time in a decade. Double Cup winners is a fantastic means to wrap up the season. As for the Premiership, we end in third place, Celtic wins another title, Rangers come in in second. A solid first year overall with the double, but we are still a ways away from taking down the old firm on the Premiership side, so we've got a bit more work to do. We've got some building blocks in place, and I have some ideas on how to move forward.